Savior, our Lord and our Redeemer. It's wonderful to be here this morning, Amen. church. Amen. It's wonderful to welcome this new year together with you. And we just thank God for the great things that he has done. But we ain't seen nothing yet. So to Amen. God be the glory. In the name of Jesus. All systems on go. To God be the glory. Again, I say good morning and welcome to the Lord's house and this is the Lord's day. It's again, I can't say it enough. It's good to lay these eyeballs on you on this side of the door. In the name of Jesus. It's a beautiful day. The Lord has so wonderfully created and has given us the privilege, extended to us the invitation to come together and worship his name in the beauty of holiness. And truly it is a privilege. And I thank God, my Heavenly Father, for his good and perfect gift. His son, our savior, our redeemer, and our Lord, Jesus the Christ. And I thank him for the indwelling presence and power of his Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, leading us and guiding us in the way we should go, convincing us and convicting us that Jesus Christ is Lord of all. I honor in his actions the elder Gregory as message pastor of this great church, Antioch, United American Free Will Baptist Church. I honor the officers, members, visitors, supporters, and friends of Antioch Free Will Baptist Church. All of whom honor the recognition are due, we honor and we recognize you in the name of Jesus. And to my sisters and my brothers in the ministry, thank God for your strength, for your determination to remain on the wall for such a time as this. For truly God is great and greatly to be praised. Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his face continually. Cast thy burden upon the Lord, and he shall sustain thee. As it is written, I have not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. As we extend this call to worship, shall we stand together with choir as a sing the, the opening selection? Let's just join in this new year with grateful praises to God. Grateful praises to God. Grateful praises to God, our Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you.
know that the Lord is good and worthy to be praised, shall we now affirm our faith together. We believe that God is the Father Almighty and that he is the maker of heaven and earth. As the scriptures have said, we believe in Jesus, that he is the Christ and is the only begotten Son of the Father. He is the way, the truth, and the life. He was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead and buried. On the third day, he rose from the dead and declared victory over the grave, death, and hell. He has gone back to the Father to prepare a place for us in his kingdom. He will come back as he promised to judge the world and to deliver the righteous. We believe in the Holy Ghost, the Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and eternal life for all true believers. Amen. The next day, John saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Look at the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is the one I meant when I said, A man who comes after me has surpassed me because he was before me. I myself did not know him, but the reason I came baptized him with water was that he might be revealed to Israel. 
Then John gave this testimony. I saw the Spirit come down from heaven as a dove and remain on him. And I myself did not know him. But the one who sent me to baptize the water, to baptize with water, told me, The man on whom you see the Spirit come down and remain is the one who will baptize with the Holy Spirit. I have seen and I have testified that this is God's chosen one.
I'm gonna get it after a while. <laughs> I'm gonna stop kicking and screaming. <laughs> but to God be the Lord, I really love the Lord. Sister Vivian Gilchrist is coming out to share with us. That was being brought to our attention in Jesus' name. Good morning. Good morning. Happy New Year. <laughs> Welcome to Antioch First Youth Church Service for 2022. We are delighted to welcome you into our sanctuary, whether it be a Facebook Live or Zoom call this morning for our worship service. We hope that the message from heaven will lift and touch your spirit in a mighty way. We welcome you and the Holy Spirit here at Antioch. Announcements. District 4 Union Meeting on Sunday, January 30th. The location will be announced later. Prayer list, remember them with calls, cards, visits, and your prayers. Deacon Harry Mumford, Sister Gladys Davis, and Sister Moni Harvey. And um, just still keep our bishop in prayer also. Um, happy birthday to all persons born in the month of January. And congratulations to all couples celebrating an anniversary in January. Thought for the week. There is no one who is insignificant in the purpose of God. Thank you. course class we took in high school or in college or whatever we've done across the spectrum 
how much is uh, how how easy how good it is if you have access to it. Uh, but you have to be so very very careful. And anybody else did a whole lot of robo calls here lately? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. oh, no. I'm like, I look at the TV, the, the yeah. call. I guess I don't know who that is. Right. And there are times I will click on the phone. Don't you hit the dead space? Right. <laughs> and then you hear bah, 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 it clicked off. The other times I'll say, "Who's calling, please?" And then they'll come on and say, "So and so, how do you have access to this number?" Click. They don't want to talk. I said, "Oh." And then I notice it. I pick up the phone and say, "Ugh." They don't answer. But it's, it's, it concerns me because it's, it's, I'm like out in the yard somewhere working or whatever, and the mom is close to the phone. I said, Mom, you don't have to worry about answering it because she's got used to now seeing the, the call. I guess I don't know anybody in Timbuktu. I don't know anybody in out in Washington State. I don't know anybody in, in Louisiana, you know, these kind of things. But it's just to make her aware that she doesn't have to answer these, these calls because she would recognize the names that this is us, some of us, otherwise than that. But it, it, it makes me concerned that so many people who will answer, and then to hear them say that all they want you to say, sometimes all they want you to say is hello, mm -hmm. and they can get your voice, and sometimes they, they can manipulate you to get a whole lot of other things going. And it's just sad the talents and the gifts and abilities that are wasted on trying to con somebody out of something and the good that it could, it could go for, and that so, so many people fall prey to that. So our prayer is, Lord, this guide us to keep us, let us know when to speak and when not to speak. We give God the glory. Amen. Well, at this time, um, we have um, this, this erotic selection. Okay, we give God the glory. We got a word from the Lord, and it's going to come on now. And we're going to, not going to rush, but we're going to do what does say the Lord and enjoy the fellowship. Amen.
I just tell them, I tell them this is the bus wide open. This, this, this first sermon of this new year, it has just been so exciting how it, is, it has come together. And we're just glad that God will do what he will do in the time that he will do it, in the way that he shall have it done in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Need a bottle of water, baby? Mm -hmm. Need a bottle of water, baby? Mm -hmm. You sure? Mm -hmm. I just take your time. Take your time. Yes, indeed. And we welcome every yes, welcome to the We welcome everybody here this morning. We're thankful, thankful, thankful for you. It's just amazing how God will bring things together. And as I always say, I, I'm excited about this privilege to share his word. And he gives it all to us in the way that is peculiar to us as he will have it be. I ain't trying to be like nobody else. I'm just being an earl. Doing what God will give me to do and enjoying it and growing in grace and in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. But it's just amazing again, I can't, can't say it enough, how it all comes together. So, okay, Lord, okay, now how's that gonna? It's okay, now you will listen to me, you're gonna do it your way. So, okay, Daddy. <laughs> all right, all right, I'll, I'll, I'll listen to you because I know it's only right when it comes <coughs> to and through you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, God.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Would you agree with me in saying that where there is life, there is growth? Is it assumed to often that growth must always be uniform, that it must be ordered, that it must be structured and secure in its development. Now, I submit to you, this is not the lesson, if you will, of nature. I submit to you, in nature, growth is continuous, but life moves forward by sudden spurts, leaps and bounds. Just consider how quickly newborns and young children seem to grow these days. For after a slow, secret process of preparation, preparation in mommy's womb, preparation comes a sudden outburst of glory and breathtaking beauty by some wondrous power of change. Life in the new, if you will? Consider even the weather patterns we have experienced in this area of the country alone over the past few months in particular. We have fall, we have winter. Today feels like spring and summer, so it's all coming together, all rolled into one powerful, unpredictable cycle of change. Now let us not forget, Lord have mercy, the continued rampant influence, the visible, unyielding cause and effect of COVID-19 and company thus far. Consider the state of the home, the community, the church, the schools, the political, legal, financial influences that affect us all at every age in this time, in this new year. Ah, yes. The power of change, the anticipation, the expectation, the promise of new beginnings. Having just celebrated Christmas, Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, your personal celebrations, welcoming in the new year, Epiphany, we reflect on what was, what is, and what is, and, and what we hope will be. Kindly open your Bibles with me to the Old Testament book of Isaiah, chapter 55, calling your attention to verses 5 through 13. Old Testament, Isaiah, Isaiah, chapter 55, calling your attention to verses 5 through, excuse me, verses 6 through 13. Isaiah. Chapter 55, beginning with verse 6 through 13. He texts me, and all oh, the joy that floods my soul. Something happened, and now I know. He touched me and made me whole. Isaiah, chapter 55. Beginning with verse 6, reading from the King James Version of the Bible, the Word of our Lord teaches, Seek ye, the Lord, while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man his thoughts. And let him return unto the Lord, and he will have mercy upon him, and to our God will he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain cometh down, and the snow from heaven, and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth, and maketh it bring forth in bud, that it may give seed to the sower, and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that cometh forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall do what? Accomplish that which I please, come on, and it shall prosper in the thing which I send. 
For ye shall go out with joy and be led forth with peace. The mountains and the hills shall break forth before you in singing and call the trees of the field and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Verse 13, come on. Instead of the thorn shall come up the fir tree and instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle tree and it shall be to the Lord for a name for an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. Our subject for this second Sunday in this new year, 2022, 2K22, 2022 is life in the new. Life in the new. If y'all came up with this song, this a brand new life, like, oh, I had to hold out my head because y'all was doing all on my head. Life in the new. Through the mirror of my mind, time after time. I see reflections of you and me. Reflections of the way life used to be. Now as we reflect upon 2021, what kind of year was it for you? A year to cherish or a year to quickly forget? Hmm. Do I cherish? Do I quickly forget? Do I quickly forget? Do I cherish? Well, I submit to you. That whatever this time of what the tone of the year was for us, we would agree that today fills us with a hope. A hope that is that a new year will bring a change for us, a chance for a fresh new start, a new beginning, life in the new. Now, as I was preparing today's lesson, I came across this question in my study sources. What the question was, what is your plan for the new year? It reads, a boy told his father, Dad, if three frogs were sitting on a limb that hung over a pool, and one frog decided to jump off into the pool, how many frogs would be left on the limb? Well, the dad replied, two. No, the son replied, there are three frogs, and one decides to jump. How many are left? The dad said, Oh, I get it. If one decides to jump, the others would too. So there are none left. The boy said, No, Dad. The answer is three. The frog only decided to jump. <laughs> Does that sound like last year's resolution? The truth be told, great inspiration makes great resolution. But oftentimes, we only decide. And months later, we are still sitting on the limb of do nothing. So, so much for bringing it up. Sitting on the dock of the bay, watching the tide roll away, wasting time. Indeed, the beginning of each new year is a time when many people set new goals or make new resolutions. Now, not to insult anyone's intelligence, a resolution is a simple checklist or a special plan an individual makes to do something better, something different, to help them improve their lives for the better. People say they will do these things, but may not be successful and thereby break their resolutions, do not carry through their special plans. Now, when I was young, girl, growing up, <laughs> making New Year's resolutions was a given for just about everyone I knew. You see, it was a time for beginning again. A time for setting our sights, a time to hope for a new year, anticipating life in the new, anticipating life in the new. Now I remember that on New Year's Day, eating black eyed peas, black eyed peas collard greens, sweet potatoes, and cornbread as a symbol of looking for a prosperous year ahead. Anybody else been there done that? Don't fool me now. Anybody else been there really done that? Okay, what did I leave out? Roger. Hey. What did I leave out? The whole head, the whole town. <laughs> yeah, the half house of chicken all that, but you know, black eyed peas comes in the whole head. Oh. Yes, indeed. Woo, anyway. <laughs> yes, indeed. Another story is told that at the beginning of a new school year, a high school principal decided to post his teacher's New Year's resolution on the bulletin board. Now, perhaps you have heard this story before. Well, 
as the teachers gathered around the bulletin board, a great commotion started. You see, one of the teachers was complaining. Why weren't my best solutions posted? She was throwing such a temper tantrum that the principal hurried back to his office to see if he had overlooked her resolutions. And sure enough, he had mislaid them on his desk. Now, as he read her resolutions, he was astounded because the teacher's first resolution was not to let little things upset her in the new year. Well, look here. Life in the new is easier. Easier said than done. <clears throat> now we know January 1st of each year is the beginning of that year. There are how many days in the year? 365. Or when is very good. There are how many weeks in a year? All right? And how many months are there in a year? When you think about it, it's a lot of time. There is so much time to do so many things, to go so many places, or to set some goals. Now, one sure way for young people to make and keep a resolution is to have Jesus as Lord of their lives. Young people can learn about Jesus by reading the Bible, studying the lessons it teaches, and by praying to God to help them understand what they have read. Now, these lessons can be applied to their lives in a very real way, such as, okay, let's see, maybe taking flowers to someone, a nursing home or a hospital, visiting and helping a neighbor, even helping a schoolmate with the homework and being respectful for both parents, respectful and obedient to parents, to teachers, and other adults. Now, we do realize the responsibility to be responsible in knowing and honoring established protocol that governs each effort to interact with each situation. In other words, do the right thing in your neighborhood. Do the right thing and be a real good. Be the best that you can be, not just a not on the law. Do the right thing. The essence of our simple for the day lesson is to understand that God has a plan for all of us and a cycle for everything we are planning to do in accordance to his will for our lives. Now, I submit to you the grand purpose, the raison d'etre, the reason being is to know God and have an ongoing relationship. It's about relationship, church, with him that brings glory to him in the way that you live your life at whatever age. I'm talking about life in the new. Now, it is this preacher's belief as we contemplate a New Year's resolution we must do so realizing that we cannot be successful in keeping it apart from God. It ain't so. It ain't so. It just ain't so. But with this thought in mind, I would like to offer to you some resolutions for you to consider at whatever age. Number one, purpose. Find time for God. Build that personal relationship with Jesus. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Prioritize. Stay or become active in a local church's worship services and Bible studies. So shall my word be that goes forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall profit in the thing whereto I send it. Plan. Choose to become a regular tither this year. For as the rain cometh down, and the snow from heaven, and returneth not thither, but water the earth, and maketh it bring forth, and bud, that it may give seed to the sower, and bread to the eater. Pray. Put an undesirable habit, addiction, sin, you name it, into the hands of God. Let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man his thoughts. And let him return unto the Lord, and he will have mercy upon him, and to our God, for he will abundantly, abundantly pardon. Understand now, be not deceived. <clears throat> oh, Lord, have mercy. Don't fool yourself at whatever age. You cannot change by yourself. You need the powerful presence of God. Now, if you want to, start by building that personal relationship with Jesus and let
that God began to call you to hunger for to change, to thirst for righteousness. You see, right now, today, in this hour, there may be someone listening who's not ready to meet the Lord. Maybe you are a Christian, but you need to rededicate your life to Jesus Christ and resolve to walk with the Lord according to his word. You've been trying to walk it your way, and you have tasted the fruit of sin and found out that it bites back real, real hard. Do you hear me? Are you listening to God? God's plan for your life, your future? It is all written for us to see in God's word, the Bible. Think on this, if you will. Regardless of past successes or failures, at whatever age, realize that keeping this promise is a team effort. Invite the Holy Spirit to join you this year. Come to Jesus in faith and obedience and be saved. I'm looking at the woman in the mirror. I'm asking her to change her ways. No message can be any clearer. Take a look at yourself and make that change. I'm talking about life in the new. I submit to you, young people can keep themselves accountable, responsible for the checklist of revolutions, excuse me, res resolutions they make. Lord have mercy. They can keep themselves accountable. For starters, list some ideas you have about things you can do at home, in school, in church, in the community. I submit to you, the truth about life is, as we become mature, you know, growing in grace and in the knowledge of the Lord, we must accept that we have the power to choose. We have the power to choose. And that we are ultimately responsible for our choices, good, bad, or indifferent. Think of the consequence of the power to choose. Lord, have mercy. What will you do with this year? How did you live in the past year? Think about it, church, at whatever age. 365 days, 52 weeks, 12 months. You gave up your life for whatever you did. The truth be told, this year ahead, some of us, May not live to see the end. And should the Lord return, none of us will. Do you believe in Jesus Christ as the Son of God? Do you know him as your Lord and Savior? Do you realize that he gave his life for you to pay for your sin through his death? Jesus thought you were worth dying for. That's why he came. That's what he did. His death was for your life in the new. If you want to be happy by faith, stay full of the Spirit of God, believing, receiving, trusting, walking, living, resting in the Holy Ghost. God, Holy Spirit, leading us, guiding us in the way we should go, convincing us and convicting us that Jesus Christ is Lord of all. By faith in God, you will receive power. You will receive peace. You will receive love, guidance, joy, security, and comfort of the Holy Ghost all the days of your life. And you will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And instead of the thorn shall come up the fir tree. And instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle tree. And it shall be to the Lord for a name. For an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. Therefore, ask God in the name of Jesus and for his sake, be to reveal his truth in you as he did and guide you into all truth by the indwelling presence and power of the Holy Ghost. He will, if you will ask in faith, life in the new. Life in the new. Dear God, thank you for the gift of the Bible and for helping us learn how to use it to learn how you want us to live. Help us to be serious and truthful as we make and keep our checklist of resolution and knowing who we are as God's children. Thank you for the teachings of Jesus 
and of the wonderful life he lived. We pray the resolutions we make and keep teach us how to love each other. Thank you for Jesus as our example of love and obedience to your will for our lives. Keep us accountable to you throughout the new year and for the rest of our lives. You are my joy, my strength, almighty God. You are my life, my love, sweet Jesus. You are my guiding, protecting, precious Holy Ghost forevermore. In Jesus' name, for his sake, we pray and say, Amen. Amen. Just a close walk with thee. Grant it, Jesus, if you please. I receive that gift and I acknowledge it as my Lord and 
Savior. Amen. Simple as confessing. Simple as believing. Simple as just trusting him to do what he says he will do. Not easy, but it is possible. And God just said, come unto me. All you that labor, all you, all you that labor, the heavy labor, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. Jesus, for a closer walk with thee, we want to thank you for the privilege of life in the new. Life in the new. God is great. Anything. 
It's so good to see. Let's just, even though we know each other, let's just stand up and introduce each other. Just say, hey, I'm so, 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 so. Come on. Don't be shy. We're all family. Come on. I'm Linda Earl. I have the opportunity to stand here every year.